So here's a quick blind test for you guys to see how the iPhone 14 Pro Max matches up with a $4,000 Pro camera setup. I know it's apples and oranges, but the goal of the video is to figure out how far can we push the iPhone photos and videos to its fullest potential. My name is Victor and we're going to put the iPhone 14 Pro Max head to head with the Sony a7 IV, which is a $4,000 camera setup with the lens and it's the same focal length as well with the 48 megapixel main camera on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But again, it's different in terms of aperture. Like I mentioned in the intro, I want to see how far we can push the iPhone footage and photos to match up with the camera. So let's get started. Let's address the issues that come with the footage coming out of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is one, it's super sharp. The over sharpening of the image is a big unnaturalistic look when you're comparing it between cameras. I just wish that Apple has a setting to dial this down so that you can really tune in that cinematic look or at least a better naturally looking footage compared to the cameras that we own nowadays. So to fix this, all I did was pretty much just blur out the image a little bit and then sharpen the edges again so that it doesn't have an overall digital look it's closer to a softer cinematic look and then after that i just added some glow and some halation effects so it can simulate kind of like a camera look a film camera kind of thing and that's my style in my videos so it really works out i think it's soft enough but still has that clarity and that it kind of matches the camera a little bit more. Now one thing about ProRes RAW on the iPhone 14 is that yes, it gives you flexibility, but not much. And the biggest downside is it takes up a lot of the space. The story, it'll eat up your storage. And I just don't think it's worth it, especially if you're not gonna do heavy color grading or heavy post-production work with your footage. Just shoot with the normal format and that'll save you space and that it'll come up with a pretty good image already. All right, let's take a look at the matched up footage right here. I actually think that they match up super close. I mean, we can go on with the grading a little bit more with the iPhone to really match it up with the Sony a7 IV. But I mean, this looks like it's coming from an actual dedicated camera. Now, if we look at these straight out of camera shots, you can really tell which one's the iPhone. Again, you have the clarity issue, the over sharpening, and that the gradient isn't as smooth as the Sony a7 IV. And like I said, if you want to color grade, I just don't think that ProRes files are really flexible enough to compensate for the data that it eats up on your phone. So I would just skip it. But again, for this testing on how far we can push the ProRes files, to match up a camera. It does pretty well, but it does need a lot of work. Now, here's a category that the iPhone 14 wins over the $4,000 camera setup. And that is the in-camera stabilization. Now, Panasonic GA series have really good in-body stabilization. I wish I could test it out head-to-head -head with the iPhone 14 Pro, but if we look at the Sony a 4s active stabilization versus just the normal video mode stabilization on the iPhone 14 Pro, that wins and it's so smooth that you don't really need to have a gimbal on it anymore. Plus with the action mode, the action mode is super smooth. The downside of that is that it just turns your footage into a noisy mush and I just don't like it. I would rather have the image quality versus the stable footage coming out of the action mode. But during my testing, the Times 3 telephoto lens on the iPhone 14 Pro, normal video camera mode, is super smooth already. So I don't think we do need action mode unless we really have to run or chase someone or do some action footage with the iPhone 14. Now let's talk about low light. Due to the iPhone 14 Pro's smaller sensor, 
you cannot get really good images or anything that remotely is close to what you can get with a dedicated full frame camera. The full frame camera sensor is like this big compared to an iPhone being like this tiny. And it's like times four low light improvement compared to the last sensor it still doesn't cut it and that if you try to color grade it or if you try to make it look good, it still is noisy. You've got to do a lot of work in post to really make it decent. Uh, I mean, for day to day personal stuff, I don't think it's an issue. But if you want to use it as a footage for something, a content creation or anything that you want to be creative with, you're going to be really limited in that smaller sensor. Overall, I'd rather have less megapixels and put it towards image quality because the image quality softening, like it doesn't have to be so sharp with the videos. Like we want to make it look natural. We want to make it look good. I'd rather have proper colors. I'd rather have good codec to really work it out in post versus an over sharpened 48 megapixel sensor that creates this look with the AI or whatever they put in this camera tech. Now let's move on to photos. My goodness, the photos on the iPhone 14 Pro really is good. Now this is where things match up very, very well. I shot everything in Pro Raw and that when I'm matching them or at least using the same settings for the a7 IV photos to the iPhone 4 photos in Lightroom, it holds up. It really has the detail. It really has that powerful raw format in there. And that if you cannot get good photos on the iPhone 14, a more expensive camera won't give you better photos. So yeah, there's no more excuse to taking bad photos with mobile photography. Everything is good nowadays and that if you focus on the foundations of photography and how to really utilize your tool, your camera at your disposal, you're gonna have really good photos compared to just relying on tech and buying more expensive gear. I didn't really test out the portrait modes because again, I'd rather utilize the actual camera sensors potential versus camera tech. So since the sensor is bigger, the depth of field is more natural. And it's, I think it's comparable to F11, around F11, F13, something like that along the lines with an actual dedicated camera setup. But overall, if you look at the photos side by side, sometimes the iPhone actually has better photos because it's already adjusted, right? It's already like done the work for you with the camera app. And that's the power of iPhones, the convenience. And like, it takes kind of like HDR photos already and that you can easily match up the iPhone 14 with a $4,000 camera setup. Overall thoughts, I think you can make footage look good on the iPhone 14 already or any mobile phones that are released nowadays because you have the potential, you have more flexibility, you have the tech now and that I think it still doesn't compete with actual dedicated cameras. I mean, in due time, maybe in within a few decades, photos for sure, but for video, I think it's gonna take a longer time to get there unless they put a massive sensor somehow. And I don't know, I, I just don't think it's gonna work out with mobile phones just yet, unless they have some sort of tech sorcery, like I mentioned in my other video. But yes, the iPhone 14 Pro has that performance already. If you know how to shoot videos with the basic foundations of photography, and videography, and you know how to work things in post-production. As usual, I'm giving away my S-Log3 luck pack. All you have to do to win is comment down below. What's your overall thoughts about the camera performance of the new iPhones? If you do want the luck pack now, it's available in the link down below. And if you wanna check out my iPhone cinematic video, check this video right here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. No one